So do they know to show you how to set up the Skywatcher Virtuoso GTI, set up the camera, set up the mount, set up the tube and how you focus and all that stuff and how you go to a target and uh, image. So you will know what you need to do to image deep space with uh, an Atlas mount. So this is basically all you need uh, to use the Virtuoso. You need the, obviously the mount and the tube. You need a DC adapter, 12 volts. You need, if you're going to use the telescope by a cable, you need the cable to plug to the adapter. And you need the cable to the camera. This comes with the camera. But this is a special one with, <coughs> that I bought. It's more reliable. And in this case, I'm going to use the focal reducer. You need the Astro camera. And I'm going to use a focal reducer. And you need these two adapters. I will uh, tell you later about this. In this case, I'm going to use the Sinscan USB adapter. It plugs in. Plugs in uh, here. In the ST4 socket. And we will plug this cable to it. I need both hands. Okay, then we will plug this end to the PC. And uh, loosen the clutches so we can turn it around. Now as for the focuser and the thrust tubes. Normally, if you're not using a focal reducer, you will need to pull these up. It needs to be like like this much down to reach focus. And the focus needs, needs to be turned anti-clockwise more. But this, this focus air is a weak point in this telescope. And the best thing to do I found is like screw it in and put the thrust tubes more down. Because this way it will be more, more tight and there won't be any flexing issues. So with the focal reducer to reach focus, you can follow this this uh, setup. It needs to be screwed all the way in, and about this much down. I say about 10, 10 centimeters, maybe. I think even even less. I think maybe seven centimeters, something like that. And uh, next thing is you need to check collimation. Now that the telescope comes with the collimation cap, I have a video about this. You need to basically loosen these three screws, put this cap here inside, and then adjust the mirror till you see the circle, the black, the black circle in the center, and then tighten these three up, these three, three small ones, and then you are ready basically to use it later at night. So this at the moment is set up, I'm not gonna... Uh, disturb the, the, the settings basically I use because I have to refocus again then now the mount needs leveling as well as you can see it's kind of leveled it's not perfect but it doesn't have to be to be honest it's, as long as it's in that black circle is fine if it's outside the circle yes it's bad it's leveled and the, the tube needs to be balanced and balance it with the camera, not without the camera. So it, at the moment, as you can see, it's just a bit, but it's good. But when I put the camera in, it will be more balanced. I, it's set up perfect at the moment to be balanced with the camera. I'm going to set up the focal reducer. This is the focal reducer I bought. It's a 2 inch. Don't buy the 1.5 inch, buy the 2 inch. Much less distortion. I'm going to take out my SV bone camera and the nose piece. Put the cap off. Now, this is how you mount the focal reducer. Uh, this is, I believe, a 16 mm spacer. Screw it in. Now, screw the focal reducer to this one. And then you need this adapter, it's an M48 to M42, 
ring of the thread and screw it in. So then the threads will fit the nose piece threads. Sorry. <laughs> And that's it, set up. And you screw it in the focuser. This residue you see is a uh, plumber tape, because I put plumber tape in the focuser threads to stiffen it up. So you don't have camera tilt. So it is uh, oh, getting dark at the moment, but the sky is still a bit bright, so I'm gonna take flats really quick now how to take flats is uh, take a white rag put it in front of the aperture then go on sharp cap adjust the, exp the exposure so it's uh, a bit bright go to capture capture flat this on histogram and we need to brighten it a bit more uh, the settings don't need to be exact as the light frames but the histogram needs to be somewhere here somewhere in the 40 percent 50 percent range in this case i'm not gonna do the flat second because i did them already but then press start and it will do a set of frames for you and select this as well capture and subtract are bias frames so you will add bias frames to the stack all right now flat frames what they will do is they will flatten the field as the name says i will show you the difference this is uh, currently with the flat frames sorry this is without the flat frames and uh, this is with them as you can see it's more as you can see there's slight vignetting it's not so apparent here because we are using a planet a small sensor but with a big sensor it's a big difference as you can see it's equal now the field illumination so that's why we use them and they will help reduce the noise a bit as well next stage is to level put the mount on horizontal and point it to polaris you don't have to be exact for this, just roughly. And I, I know that Polaris is a bit of center. Tighten the clutches. And that's it. It's in the home position like that. When we can start the alignment. Now in this case, I'm going to use Polaris, which is the North Star, and either Pollux or Castor. Uh, they are uh, two stars relatively next to each other yes they are, they are in a good spot I can see them from here so I'm gonna use those two stars but basically when I use two stars far from each other and that are available to you uh, depending where you live okay now we have uh, we have sharp cap booted up we're gonna okay now we have sharp cap booted up here you need sharp cap pro for this uh, it's the pro version it's cheap like for 15 euros to buy and i'm gonna open sin scan up on my pc we are going to connect i'm going to turn the vent was mount on and uh, we have two ways that we can connect. We have uh, the Wi-Fi mode and the cable mode. I'm going to use the cable mode. But to connect with Wi-Fi, go to settings, connect settings, and put it to network to connect with Wi-Fi. And then press connect. And sorry, first you have to <laughs> first you have to select the the Wi-Fi. This is the Wi-Fi of the of the mount since scan slash something. Connect to it, then press connect it and, and it will connect. But since I'm not gonna use that, I'm gonna use a different method. Go to connect settings, serial, and select the available port. Press connect, and we are in. Okay, so I'm gonna choose 
North Level Alignment, Input Polaris, and Pull Looks. Okay, begin alignment, and press the star, and the mount is slowing at the moment, as you can hear. Now, this is the live view. Uh, go to Sharp Cap Settings. This is important. If you don't do this, you, you won't be able to plate solve well. Go to plate solving and then put your mount focal length. In this case, 750 millimeters. Okay, go to tools, push to assistant. Oh no, I'm gonna show you another great way. You can use the push to assistant and work your way, but the way I'm gonna show you is much more efficient. Go to tools. You need to be connected to your mount like you saw me do here. Press this this box. Go to tools. Go to catalog. Uh, input Polaris. No, Polaris is a bit tricky because there are a lot of options here, but Polaris is the brightest one, like the North Star is the third one. And press start. And now what it's doing is it's plate solving the sky to see where it's, where it's at. And it will send commands to the mount so it goes to Polaris automatically. This is really helpful if you do it this way. As you can see, the mount is moving. And sometimes this happens. It doesn't work always good. With Polaris especially. So in this case, I'm gonna use the push to assistant and push manually. Sometimes it doesn't work good, I don't know why. Just how it is. And you have instructions where to move. In this case, I'm moving a bit left and a bit up. Okay, we are getting closer. Basically, you want to, I think it's self-explanatory that you want a number to be close to zero. Okay, this is Polaris here. I can close the, the window. And you have to be careful because you, you have to know which orientation is the camera is in to, to know which how it's going to move. All right, it's centered. Press the star, and it will go to Pollux now. And in this case, since the the go to catalog assistant didn't work good, we're gonna use the push to assistant. Sometimes it happens, but usually it works good. Pollux, okay. Now we're gonna push to assistant. Full catalog. Well, looks start okay we're not bad push to the right a bit you can use the definder scope for this but for deep sky finder scope won't, won't help you much because they are faint for the stars you can use the finder scope though to align Okay, now it's aligned, the mount. And uh, I'm gonna go tonight. Now I can go to the to go to a target. I'm gonna go to NGC two four zero three. It's a beautiful galaxy, like the, tri the triangular galaxy. I never imaged it. I have been wanting to image it for a while now. Okay, I can see nothing. I'm gonna up the gain a bit. Okay, now I'm gonna see where the galaxy is. 
push to assistant and then GC to 403 and we are pretty close so we have to move a bit left a bit left again and down and we are very close now a bit to the right this galaxy is very dim so it, it won't be very hard to see without plate solving but I can very faintly see it here okay and now we're gonna we're ready to start imaging okay now the next step is set your exposure with an altus mount I and especially this fast I stick to three seconds and 150 gain or something like that and 20 offset in this case black level but if you're imaging with autofocal reducer, you need to either increase the gain or the exposure. Okay, go to live stack. Clear. I'm gonna start live stacking. Now, what you need to do first is get a good exposure, like pinpoint stars. Don't get trails. And then you are gonna see the, the filter FWHM. And you are gonna see these numbers. Uh, this is helpful so trailed subs trailed exposures though will not get added to the stack so when you see these numbers set set fil press on filter on this one filter of whm and set the number close to what you are seeing of the first ones so i'm gonna set it to seven so basically stars that are fatter than seven will not be added so this will help you not gathering bad subs. And basically that's it. And you will... Uh, I would defer to also have to keep adjusting sometimes so because the mount will start drifting off. It's normal. Don't be alarmed with uh, an Altus mount. As you can see, there's the galaxy here at the middle. But it's very faint at the moment, we have, we have to give it more time. It's also a good idea to turn on uh, the, the unguided dithering by going to guiding and pressing this button. Monitor guiding application and uh, it will dither in this case every 200 seconds and this will remove any walking noise. But I believe you have to set it up first, this one. Let's go to Shark Rep Settings. Guiding. And select this one. Did their only guiding. And press OK. So, uh, the ring it's a good idea to use it. Because if you don't, walking noise will ruin your image. It will be like, like straight lines passing all the way. And you won't be able to remove them with noise reduction, no, so it's better to dither and prevent them in the first place. Now, as you can see, we are 30 minutes in, and people ask me all the time, how do you stack all those subs like with an Altus mount? Won't you get field rotation? And yes, as you can see, we are getting field rotation, but what I do is pause the stack, go to the live view, and recenter the target every once in a while, like every 10 minutes. And sometimes you have to do it even more frequently. And I can see the, the galaxy here in the center. If you don't do this, it will drift out of view and you will get, you will be forced to pause this tech because the, the image will be all rotated and all cropped. So, that's the downside of Alta's mounts. You have to babysit them a bit. Not like equatorial mounts. You can just plug them in and away you go. But it's fun. For me, it's fun. It's challenging. When something is challenging, it's fun for me. But not all people are like me. So basically, that's it. And now, the more time you put in, the more the image will be. Better the image will be. I hope I helped you using the Skywisher Virtuoso GTI mount to image deep space. And you can check my live streams and my videos to help you more. Cheers, guys.